Hello everyone, welcome to a special episode of Legends of the Force, where I am giving my immediate thoughts, more or less immediate thoughts, on Star War on Solo as Star Wars story. Specifically, I'm giving this in context of what we've covered of the Star Wars classic expanded universe, the Legends continuity thus far. This is without getting into the Star Wars story, uh, without getting into the, the Han Solo trilogy. Instead, we have the Han Solo Adventures trilogy and the Lando Calrissian trilogy that we're talking about here. So, talking about the film real quick, we will be getting into some slight spoilers here. Some slight spoilers here on the film. I'm going to try to keep it to a minimum because, hey, as this video is coming out the week after the film came out. So, premise of the film, Han Solo, scrappy street rat on the streets of uh, Borrelia managed to get off planet, but his lady love is left behind and he ends up giving a he first ends up joining the Empire but when he gets the opportunity he deserts and joins a group of outlaws and smugglers and ends up engaging in a sort of daring smuggling heist in order to make a big score, and this leads to the first meeting of Han and Lando Carizian, and also the first meeting of Han and Chewbacca, and the Falcon, and them ending up with the, with the Falcon. So, I, I'm going to avoid spoiling the actual straight up plot here, because there's a lot of great stuff in here that honestly can be spoiled, um, particularly if you've been really deep diving or engaging in the modern um, Star Wars, kind of this, the, the new Star Wars expanded universe as well. Stuff like Rebels and Clone Wars and that sort of thing. I haven't read as much of the new novels, I need to get caught up on that. I haven't read as many of the comics that, but there's a lot of good stuff here. So, characterization-wise, the books mesh a lot with the earlier novels. Um, tonally, or the, or the film meshes well with the earlier novels, tonally. In particular, the Han Solo Adventures series read a lot like a, like, more Golden Age cinema of, like, um, for example, various film noir film stories or pulp adventure films of the kind which influenced Indiana Jones, or stuff like um, the, name of, um, the African Queen. Um, basically, said basically the the Han Solo trilogy. If you remember from my video on that, is basically going, hey. Harrison Ford has a lot of positive traits and qualities in common with Humphrey Bogart. Let's take those concepts of like other Humphrey, Fo Humphrey Bogart films and let's put let's move these into the Star Wars universe and put Han Solo in their place. 
that sort of thing. So that's kind of what this plot is here. It's where it's it's a bit of a heist and it's a bit of a it starts off with an old western train robbery kind of thing in a lot of respects and moves into a heist film but one which has a bit of an air to it of or issue of like either a western heist or so, or something a little more noir-ish with again Han Solo in the, the, the center role and with various other characters like Lando and that sort of stuff around me working into this with Lando's presence in the film I should mention by the way Donald Glover nails Lando Calrissian like spot on like, perfectly nails Lando Calrissian or in a way that could only be equaled by the guy who created the role in the first place. I mean, there is a reason why Billy D. Williams has continued to reprise the role of Lando Calrissian. And it's not, oh, he doesn't get work. It's he plays the role well, and he certainly enjoys doing the role. That's why they get him back in the they, for the Star Wars radio plays. They got him back in the studio when Orlando Calrissian showed up on Rebels. They got him in the recording studio. And that's because oh, voice acting doesn't take very long unless it's more affordable to hire to pay the original actors. If it was just that we'd be getting other of the original film actors there. Maybe not necessarily Carrie Fisher. For Leia's appearance in season two of Rebels, Carrie Fisher was still around then, but her voice is not what it is. Doesn't mesh for with for young Leia. I'm thinking more in terms of other positions. So the film is really good. We have. Really good, really good plotting for a heist story. Also, I do want to give some props here for Aiden, for Alden, I'm going to spell his name, Ian Reich as Han Solo. If you ever watched the Empire of Dreams documentary, it was came with the original DVD box set of the Star Wars trilogy. One of the things that they had for showing the making of the Star Wars films was clips from other auditions for people who came forward to play Han Solo. One was Burt Reynolds, and another one was a young, relatively unknown actor who had done some Disney stuff by the name of Kurt Russell. And there's always been this thought in my mind of what happens if, what, is, what does it look like in the universe where Kurt Russell and Harrison Ford's career paths, career trajectories were reversed, where Kurt Russell got cast as Han Solo, and then Harrison Ford goes and helps out, or is hired to work on John Carpenter's deck, and ends up in Escape from New York, and in thing and in numerous other um, John Carpenter films and ends up in Kurt Russell's career trajectory because those are two actors who have a very similar and very distinct style and they both could have gone to, like I'm not saying that they're interchangeable because they're very different in terms of the air which they carry to their characters and the, the characters they play. But it makes for a very different universe, so to speak. It, 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 it very, it's both very different and very similar. You can see both actors, Burt Reynolds as well, uh, in those roles. So with Burt Reynolds, part of me, my brain goes, with me seeing Burt Reynolds in those roles, 
is it could, did Burt Reynolds take on roles that were similar to Han Solo in the wake of not getting the part and seeing how the film took off? Because as his way of saying, I could have done that, I could have been that, or what? I don't know. But anyway, Alden Ironreich performance as Han Solo feels less like he's trying to channel Alec Guinness in the way that Ewan McGregor was trying, because very clearly trying to channel Alec Guinness in the prequels and especially in Revenge of the Sith. And it feels like Han Reich's going, yeah, Harrison Ford, this role is Harrison Ford's role. He goes forward to play it in more movies. I have to account for this. I have to, this is a person who is going there. But Kurt Russell almost got this part too. So what if I play this as Kurt Russell maturing or trending into Harrison Ford? It's it's a very interesting and very fun performance to see. So as far as the, the characterization stuff goes, yeah, narratively wise, this is Star again, this is going, okay, Star Wars is this. It's it is in many ways it owes as much not just to like Flash Gordon, Buck Rogers, and that sort of thing, as it does to classic Hollywood cinema. And it's doing the heist film and the Western film and that sort of thing. And retooling them to fit in the Star Wars universe in interesting ways. The height, the train robbery heist, the um well both both that's both the train robbery heist and the robbing the heavily guarded facility style heist. On the one side of things. And as far as the characterization goes, or the characters, it it, it is we get the glimpse of Han Solo as young street rat. We get the glimpse of Lando Carizian with the Falcon. He's not... He hasn't gone legit yet in the way that he... That he's gone when we first meet him in Empire, where he's semi-legit. He's running the Cloud City facility. He's, like, all things considered... The operation he's running is up an above board and legal one. Um, he's where he's at in a way in the Lando Carrizian adventures, where he's semi legit. He was a smuggler. He's officially retired, but nothing is. But the only thing stopping him from going on a side job and getting back in the game for one more run and a bunch of cash, which may set him set for a while, or may lead to him broke again, is him. And this film sets it up like, theoretically, one month prior would have been when Goofy, Wa Goofy Ra from The Land of Carisian Adventures leaves. In fact, we have a dialogue reference directly to Lando Carisian the Star Cave of Thromboka. Now, the way it's set up, it could very easily... It could be read a couple different ways. It could be read as... Lando... As, like, the Lando Calrissian Adventures stories actually exist in universe in the same way that supposedly the Star Wars trilogy is part of the Journal of the Wills, with Lando's adventures in those books basically being a Baron Munchausen-esque exaggerated tales of daring do... Which actually fits because they're like in Lando Carrizian, the Star Cave and Thrinboka, there are at least four chapters with which start with Lando winning a game of Sabic. Including a winning games of Sabic against giant space whales. Giant psychic space whales. If you don't believe me, go back and watch those episodes. I'll put the link in the show notes. So there's that. And so if it, we have a reason for Lando to get fit in here. Uh, other things of note. 
Fans of the Star Wars animated film, animated series of Rebels and Clone Wars, there are a few references dropped in here in interesting ways. Uh, I'm not going to spoil them, because when those moments came up, they were a, oh, 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 you, oh, you did that moment. And I don't want to ruin those moments for you in terms of telling you that, telling you what they are. The moments are there, and there's something to look forward to if you have been enjoying, the, if, if you've been enjoying Rebels and Clone Wars and that sort of thing. But, um, but so you can look out for that. I'll tell you what they are. I'm not, not telling you what they are. Also, look for a cameo by Warwick Davis. A rather extended cameo appearance by Warwick Davis. To the point where it's almost not a cameo anymore. Um, that was like and, and less a and more a minor supporting role. That was really interesting to see. So the film. I really enjoyed it. Um, other bits I liked. We have uh, Phoebe Waller Bridge um, has a really, really good role as L337, or as Leet, who is um, the, the droid who works with Lando. I don't want to say that he's Lando's droid, and more in the sense of when when you ask Marvin the paranoid android in Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, "Is this your robot?" and he responds, "No, I'm mine." That's the kind of attitude and mindset her character has. Woody Harrelson is great in this. I, I've seen him in a few things. Um, I haven't seen as many Woody Harrelson performances as I necessarily like, but considering that, um. This film has some significant Western elements to it. Fitting Woody Harrelson in here works perfectly in a lot of respects. Um, other really good performances of note uh, is Amelia uh, Clark as Kira, who is Han's love interest in, back on Australia and ends up later on in the film, where she has a really interesting character role and character arc to her that I'm not going to spoil, but if you're, I will say this, if you're worried about her getting fridged, of her getting gratuitously killed off to provide further motivation for Han, that doesn't happen. Which is awesome. I, I appreciate that. And finally, we have our Perhaps only or at least notable um, MCU to Mar to uh, Star Wars universe crossover here with Paul Bettany, aka the Vision, aka Jarvis, as uh, Dryden Voss, the crime boss who Han ends up working for, and he also has a really good performance as he plays this crime boss who is seems that doesn't seem who is kind of unhinged, but is unhinged in that way that fits with the sort of nineteen thirties, nineteen forties gangster film gangster, where or the pre Hayes code gangster film gangster, where he's like charming and gent that, that, that he can be both charming and genteel, but with like this hair trigger of violence. It's lingering underneath, and they give this makeup job on Bettany that works perfectly with this. With this, if you look up his character, pictures of a character in line, he's got this scar pattern on his face, like he's been, like he's been clawed by this nasty creature, and had his face kind of rebuilt. Um, good, we spent good money on it, and they did, did a really good job, but it's not. One hundred, but the, there's no hiding the fact that he's got a had a set of claws raked across his face, and you get the impression from his twerk from, from, from his uh, quirks and traits as a gangster that maybe after he saw the best that the surgeons can do, he thanked them for their service and then killed them all. 
not because he doesn't want anyone to know he's had the surgery, because you can't hide that, but because they didn't do it well enough. And he has expectations of his employees, and they were not met. So. All right. With all that in mind, tell me what you thought about the film. If you enjoyed it, if you didn't enjoy it, um, please post your thoughts in the comments below. See this on my uh, YouTube channel or on my blog. I ask that because this video is coming out within a week of the film's theatrical, re uh, theatrical release, that you hold off on spoilers until the DVD or Blu-ray has been out for a month or two or something, so that people have a chance to go see it without having stuff given away. So, hold off on the spoilers. If you do give spoilers before... This movie will probably be out on DVD or Blu-ray by Christmas. So if you give out spoilers before, uh, let's, let's go earlier, before September of 2018. If by then you're, 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 if before then you're giving out spoilers, uh, delete your comment. Um, don't be a dick. That's my general standard ruling for my comments. Don't be a dick, especially in new release. I mean, yes, we all know that Han's not going to die in this movie. Chewie's not going to die in this movie. But there's other stuff that can happen. Other characters that interesting things can happen to that we don't anticipate. Or interesting things that can still happen to Han and Chewie that we don't anticipate. So, that just keep that in mind. Wait until September to drop, the, to drop those bombshells in an unprotected manner. If you do want to give spoilers, or you just, you just you need to talk about them, ROT as as they've been saying on the internet since actually using it days, ROT thirteen that shit. So, with all that in mind, thank you very much for watching. I'm Count Zero, and next month's installment of Legend of the Force will be where we ret will be a return to droids as we take a look at the second big arc of the Dark Horse uh, Droids comics. See you then. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please like and subscribe, and also consider backing my Patreon. Patreon backers get episodes up to one week early of this show and any future Let's Plays. Also, please consider backing my coffee. Uh, toss me a few bucks also helps support the show, and it's not a monthly obligation or anything like that. <laughs>